What if you could travel to parallel worlds, the same year, the same Earth, only different dimensions? A world where the Russians rule America, or where your dreams of being a superstar came true, or where San Francisco was a maximum security prison. My friends and I found the gateway. Now the problem is finding a way back home. And welcome back to episode three of Circling the Vortex here on Experience Kills, where we talk about an episode of Sliders. And this uh, week we were watching The Last Days, as it was titled, which is actually confusingly episode four in the running order. And uh, yeah, this was an episode all about the end of the world and the biggest hangover you could possibly imagine. And I can't wait to dive into it with my co-host, my Sliders compatriots from Alternative Realities today. We have Kurt that came from a world where bananas are coloured red and apples are coloured yellow. And that somehow resulted in a place with no children. Kurt, can you explain that? Well, people just had the wrong fruit and became sterile. Sucks when that happens, man. It's really bad. And we also have uh, Nathan here from a world in which lamps are actually bombs. How does that affect life on your world? Well, it's just biology when you don't have the physics. That, that's a very good so point. I butchered the quote there. <laughs> just call back to I two weeks it. ago. I love it. I love it. Very, very good. Uh, so, yeah, by all means, if you haven't listened to the previous episodes, I do suggest catching up. And I do hope you're all watching along with us uh, as we go through this increasingly daft saga that is Sliders Series 1. What did we? How did you guys feel about Last Days? Before we get into it, like in there. So the concept is there. The guys slide. We don't have the prologue or epilogue slide in this one, and they jump straight into a world in which it's like two days to Armageddon. The film, literally, um, and everybody's like, "Fuck life, yeah, whatever." Um, I I really like this episode because that it implies like there's a lot of implication both be- before they do the. As or the missile, I should say. Yeah. Before I give away too much, and then at the end, the the post after the missile stuff. Yeah. They have to deal yeah, with. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot. I like. Of I like the concept here, and again, it's an interesting one. This one's more of like a, a morality think piece. There, there are some strange. So there's three plots here. Should we should we just dive into describing what happened a bit and talking about it as we yeah. go along? I mean, Where do you guys? One of them isn't even a plot. Let's be honest. It's it's, just... it's a party. <laughs> It's a, a really I'd, kind of shitty eighties party, but well, yeah. I was, I was who wants to dive one. in? Oh, the other one. The other one. one. The that's other not one. A plot. See, see, the Rembrandt one. I liked this one. This this one actually that's, might be like like Rembrandt. That's a, a bit lot. of plot. It's a bit yeah. of character. So the guys basically they get to this planet and then to this universe and they end up like in a in a shop, uh, and it's being boarded up. Uh, the guy there is like you know wanting to know nothing to do with the riots and the the frivolity outside. Uh, the, the quite well behaved frivolity you hear some gunshots but you never really see any violence or anything too ex- extreme but Rembrandt's really pissed and he decides he's going to go off and do his own thing and then uh, Wade's like oh we should try and find our family so Quinn and Wade go off and do their thing well, and, the world. and Arturo yeah. tries to go off and, uh, and save the world he's the only one that's really actively trying to do anything about it uh, so we get these three distinct plot lines uh, that kind of converge from there and then they come back to <coughs> Back at the end as well. Uh, this is kind of like a, a more simple, kind of a simpler concept than yeah. the previous episode. It's very easy to grasp. Yeah. Um, and it becomes, because of that, kind of a more of a character piece, I suppose, yeah. than than the previous episode, which was more of a high concept piece. So this is more about, let's build some character moments. Let's, you know, get some development out of them and stuff like that. So so who wants to, who wants to tell me about, you know, the plots and where it went from there? Uh, so at the beginning... Like you said, we see a lot of panic and chaos in the streets. They see people making out, crashed cars, that kind of thing. I mean, panic and chaos for for tea time viewing, as we've said before, and also on a budget. <laughs> so and on it's a budget, kind of like yeah, it's kind of like the most chaos you've got. Oh man, that's a man in a suit drinking a beer with a biker. Oh, you'd never yeah. see that normally. You'd never see that dancing a little bit in yeah, the street. Yeah, dancing a little bit. <laughs> it's the end of days. And you tearing up a parking ticket. It's like, oh, I love oh, it. Such well, rebellion. That bit was overlooked, but because the parking lady. 
Yeah. Goes up to him and she knows like, oh, don't do that. She's like, what are you going to do about it? Rips it up in front of her and he says, it's not every day you get to do that to your wife. And then, I mean, it's barely visited again. It's his he's, wife. Yeah. yeah. I miss that said. entirely. He just mentions that briefly and he's just, you know, been a proper dick to her. <laughs> That's so, well, if you're talking about husbands being wow. dicks to wives, there's way yeah. more of that coming up wow. shortly. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah, again, another really good pre credit stinger when they find out there's 48 hours till the asteroid and hits. they've got three days on the they've planet three days on the planet yeah which so is like which the big is question a, yeah. what the fuck are they gonna do yeah, to get out how, of this how are they gonna get out of this one yeah um so yeah rembrandt panics and leaves um we get wade who i think we're gonna start the wade watch some wade watch this week which... so what's wade watch so i don't know how to describe how Wade is feeling other than she is extremely thirsty right now. She's she's she... like she's like a horny teenage boy at circa fourteen years old. Like it's it's so transparent her desire yeah. for Quinn that it's kind of upsetting how much he puts her in the sister zone up to this point and it's just like Dude, she, she's so into him. It's like it's almost like her defining characteristic. It's a little yeah. bit disappointing that that's Yeah, that's just, that's her, her entire existence. Written is wants the cue ball yeah yeah or the q-tip i think more accurately uh i couldn't resist sorry you set me up for that one um but it is kind of a bit it's a bit sad that she doesn't have more going on for her character in this episode and again it's the episodic nature of this show that i don't necessarily think where that ends up that relationship in this episode will even get referenced again it's sort of like the director of this one decided that this was going to be the center the sort of the b plot the main subplot yeah. to arturo trying to save the day was going to be them quinn and wade basically making house after he tries to he basically they go to quinn's house don't they in this dimension and they find that there's sliding equipment there but it breaks and so after that he kind of just gives up and they just like have a nice meal and get a little bit romantic and she's saying and some dark, really some very she said jazz. some super cheesy lines about along the lines of i don't care if i die because you know i'm connected to all the other wades <sighs> and if as, as long as they go on i i feel at peace with my with my lot here and it's just like oh mate really you just throw it in the towel she's met one other wade Yes, she has only one. met one other Wade at this point. He was point, a resistance yes. leader, that's it. But didn't, didn't well, resistance leader Wade the... died really quick as well, from what I remember. One of the other ones that we've not seen, I guess there could have been one in any other the yeah, yeah, implied any... verses, other but we've only seen Yeah, it could have been a cannibal, cannibal Holocaust Wade, could have been, you know, thirsty in other ways for human blood, you know, so that's... That's interesting. That's, that's something I've always wondered is the, the implied worlds that they, they go to when it's like, oh, do you remember that time we went to this world? Do you think that was them potentially trying to, to set up like a like an expanded universe, like a like a novel or something? You know, like a spin-off novel that you would get? Oh, God, I hope it was going to get picked dude, up in a Dark Horse comic. If yeah. I find out there's any Sliders tie-in fiction, I will acquire it and we will consume it. Official only. Now, I, well, Just, oh, I know there's some fanfic out there. I know there's some fanfic out there, brother. I know there's some fanfic. Oh, you know that exists. Yeah, There's going to be so much Slashfic. So much Slashfic. <laughs> oh, my God. Is it? It's a, it's a get dirty, your, dirty get verse. Your Wade, Wade, and Wade. Oh, Slash flick. it's just gonna be yeah, constant like yeah, like the same character. In this world, we're jiggy. twins, and yeah. obviously she's she's connected to all of them. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> she is. So they're making house, and we're just getting Wade characteristic. Characteristic is just non-existent in this episode, other than she likes Quinn. Yeah, she's um, she's trying to get. She's really trying to complete the circuit of the number of bases that she can touch with. With Quinn, that are tea time from, friendly. Yeah, that are tea time friendly. I mean, you get some hugs, hugs, a few, a lot of dancing, dancing. Hugs there was, there was dancing. the one kiss where they go in and then they move away. Oh, she, she, she moves, moves, moves away. away. She moves she away. away. She can't do she, it. Yeah, she couldn't they couldn't go through it. And they had that really quite crappy looking meal, which Ooh, looked yeah. like a few rolls and that was kind of and salad and that was it. Uh, and then they actually they they go for it. They make out uh, and get interrupted by Arturo, which is kind of, but not like before usually it would usually be like the beat before yeah. they make out but they actually make out and then as he's leaving they make out again so it's like a real going for like oh, they, they've crossed that bridge now that's happened uh, we'll see if there's any ramifications of that uh, on the next episode in a couple of weeks I, I can't remember if there is bet there's not much I bet I you I bet you know um, but so so that's kind of the B plot and meanwhile Arturo is off trying to save the world but this is kind of where 
uh, the, the meat of the story is because he's found Baelish who is, if you remember from the pilot episode, he's kind of the stoner rocker character who's in the background like uh, at the um, lecture hall. Do you remember him Nathan? Yeah, you vaguely. Vaguely, vaguely remember. He didn't have much to do in that. Yeah. He just annoyed Arturo, I believe, a couple of times. And uh, in this one, he's a genius, and he's the only person that be can is convinced that he can create an atomic bomb, because it didn't happen in this universe. Einstein uh, sabotaged the bomb so it never went off uh, in the Manhattan Project, and therefore, the interesting tidbit, World War II went on another five years... In the, is that mentioned? Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they mention it. Yeah. And he goes, oh, if they'd invented the bomb, we could have saved a lot of lives and maybe stopped the war five years earlier. And it's yeah. kind of like, oh, so wow. There's a lot implied there. Yeah, that, that is interesting. because it's And it all becomes now the big moral question of, um, you know, is it right to split the atom to create this atomic bomb to save, to save this world, to save this Earth? Um, but the implications being, of course, it will then be misused. Um, and I think we obviously get a really strong indication at the end of the episode that, yes, it's going to be horribly oh, yes. misused. Horribly, horribly misused. Well, he because has some good, noble ideas at the beginning. He does. Nuclear yeah, cars, yeah. nuclear power stations. Yeah, even if the waste is going to get chucked in the, in the sea. Ocean. Yeah, at one point. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, he says, like, into the sea. Then he says, oh, we should fire it into the sun. Or which what, bury, which bury it or something. I'm so, sure we'll find a so way. So Arturo tries to get around this by taking some of the plans, but he drops them, and Baelish found, finds yeah. them. Uh, and it, it seems very much like Baelish is now going to be Earth's dictator with this power, basically. Even though there is a government space agency. Uh, yeah, the, they, the, the FSA. FSA yeah. we, we, the, fe the Federal Space Agency. Yeah, weirdly, though, not a lot of other government. Or, well, we often get government interference in these episodes. There's often a government-type character, but we didn't get any of well, that in this one. This government seems, we, I guess, seemed... End of days, but yeah. very open to just. All right, yeah, oh, you've got a bomb. Do you want to stick it on a rocket? Okay, let's just stick it on a rocket. They they seem to make that happen all off camera, all off screen, very very easily. I mean, you know, it's the last day on Earth. I think the government just didn't really care at that point. Well, they just had they had a, what a heavy payload capable rocket just yes. sitting on the launch pad, ready to go. By the way, the launch pad right near San Francisco. It is very close. I mean, that which pad is that? Like San Francisco launch pad. The oh, oh, big the, one. the San Francisco. Oh, the big, the big one. <laughs> oh, I, I was thinking of the little one. My bad. Yeah. In this world, they they don't they don't use Florida to launch rockets. In this world, they just they have it in San Francisco. Where I should have thought of that. Yeah. yeah. Everything is in San Francisco. It's very true. Everything yes. does happen it's in San Francisco. All about San Fran. Yeah, it's that lovely bridge. We like to see the bridge as much as possible. Um, and then so the C plot. While well, that's going on with Wade and Quinn and Arturo and all of that, is Rembrandt going off to party land. I know, I really like this story arc. Well, he I does like have some growth. Yeah. I mean, and to be fair, Quinn and Wade has growth. Um, Arturo's is the only one that sort of stays the same, but Quinn and Wade's are, yeah, it's it's not really growth, it's, it's kind of gross. <laughs> but, um, not really character growth, I guess, more... A romantic character relation interaction. interaction. Oh, I I think there's a growth. I think there's a growth somewhere in that. The, the, the Q-tip is definitely yeah, growing. Oh. Yeah. Um, but no, I I should, so Rembrandt goes to church, and and the, and the minister's like, "So you're gonna stay and help out?" And he just laughs in his face. Yeah, like, nah, no, see I'm, you later, I'm, mate. I'm looking to party down, brother. And it's yes. kind of just like you're. A, that is such a. He gets dick. lured to a party basically by a disrobing lady. He does. Yes. Wearing some fetching lingerie, which they then they then break into a shop to get her some clothes, which I thought was very considerate, really. Very well. Yeah. She wanted she wanted some she clothes. She didn't want to pay for it. You know, come on. Yeah, it's the end of the day, so why yeah. not? Why not? And then they go to this quite this sort of small scale party, which is obviously meant to feel a lot bigger. And it's also for what is the end of day's hedonism. It's really tame. A guy rides a motorcycle inside and trashes the buffet table. He looks so that, like fifties grease rocker. Think of the canapes, Kurt. There's not that much drinking. <laughs> think of the canapes. It was such a lovely spread, and it was ruined. You got trashed. By there's, there's a guy with a balloon hat. I mean, implying, yeah, that's pretty intense. Implying that at the end of the universe, one guy's main goal was to make loads of balloon <laughs> animals. Can, and can balloon I just items. can I just confirm for you that if it was my last 24 hours on earth i would be killing as many jugglers and clown types as i possibly could including those that wore balloon hats because that's just yeah, exactly but this guy there's someone there just making balloons in his final days i like it earth. that's, that's just, just like no he but you don't understand his backstory you see before he made that he he was an accountant and he always wanted to make balloon uh animals and balloon items of clothing and his parents wouldn't let him follow his dream but because it's the end of days he's like screw you mum screw you dad i'm gonna make the balloon items i've always wanted to make and he's gone to this crazy party and he's doing it man he's, he's finally the only doing person it. happy when the world doesn't end 
is it? Well, and he's is achieved the, his yeah, dream. This is the thing dream. I would have loved to see, like the next twenty four hours. Yeah, because, yeah. Because they have to wait another twenty four hours after saving the world in the end of this, right? Towards the end of the yeah. episode, but you don't really see it because no, they just cut. Because damn, the amount of people that are just like they're looting, they're shooting, they're killing, Whoa. they're sexing. That's the you've whole got, you've party. Got the, well, the party, the, the room, the room, yeah, the room, party. the room with the Russian roulette going on. So, so yeah, leading up to this, Rembrandt is having a wicked time at this party. He's, he's, ba- he's, he's banging, mate. He's he's doing the crying man again. He's, he's singing, he's singing, he's dancing, fun on, on getting the, kissed by ladies. Yeah, on the piano and everything. Um, then he, he oh, oh he also meets that couple doesn't he the, it's a slightly uh, weird way so that, that, when he first walks in right so he has a little bit of a connection with this with this woman and then her husband comes up and he basically says yeah you want to you want to hit that hit it man and then he, he basically yeah, gives him with permission some other lady yeah and it's just like this is really this is like swingers coming in here yeah man. this is some this is some strange they're trying stuff to raise right the hedonism level they are trying to raise, without showing anything and with only implication they are doing their best to show debauchery at its highest yes for tea time viewing for tea time viewing <laughs> at half past six on a, on a <laughs> Tuesday evening yeah um, but I think they they do it they do a good job but then we have the room the room of these guys are now really end of days in it. And it's like Russian roulette, man. We got our revolver. We got the the chamber. We got the bullet. We got the single bullet, you know. And at this point, the husband asks his wife to do it for him. Do like, it for us, you know. Do it like, for us, and yeah. he says, "Do it for me. Don't you love me? Show how much you love me. Go on, pull the trigger and blow, try and blow your own brains out." And I'm like, "That makes uh, I sure if I tried that with my wife, I don't think it would go over well. No, that, that, even with the end of days, it's considerably dark yeah. for like you know, London, yes. like evening. Like, and Rembrandt at this point like goes." Not I'm out. Yeah. This is this is the line. This is the line. <laughs> this is too much. Which is nice. And then yeah. and he then leaves with the wife. Yeah. He, he leaves with the, the wife. Gives the gun back. Yeah. Don't hurt Gives yourself. The, yeah. Don't hurt yourself. It's a gun, Rembrandt. You really are stupid, aren't you? Uh, I love it. I and, love the, it. And, the, and they go off and they go back to the church. And, you know, and then you end up doing like soup kitchen and handing out food to the homeless people, or at this point, probably not just homeless people, but like anybody, because who knows what's going on at the minute? When everyone's burnt all their food or throw it out. Yeah, well, if you know, maybe maybe if you went around Wade's, she's doing a really good job cooking up a storm there, making house so pretty, like with her roll, <laughs> roll and salad. We can't burn salad, so yeah. it's difficult to burn salad. Uh, I I do wonder where they even got that food from. You know, who sh- who wait? Were the grocery store still open day before the end of the world? I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe just there supermarkets. Was one at the start, there was like apples, seventeen dollars each. Well, yeah. I don't understand that. Wouldn't it just be apples? Free because everybody's looting everything. Yeah, but at the same time, like if you haven't got anything to worry about, and someone's like, "Hey, that's like seventy quid. You'll probably have whatever." Mate, I don't know. It's people weird. People will see it anyway. Yeah. At least the what the few people who will buy it, you're gonna get. Like, you know, so so blood. yeah. So that's where their sort of story ends, and then they all come back together uh, for the final moments to either see the world survive, the rocket work, or die when the asteroid hits. And lo and behold, the nuke goes off. After a couple of moments of hesitation to make us all wonder if it isn't going to go off, of course it's going to go off. And magically, this very low yield nuclear weapon uh, does take out an asteroid which is bigger than the one that took out the uh, dinosaurs, which seems unlikely, uh, especially as the first attempt. But fair enough, Arturo is very, very smart. There's that visual when when they look up, it looks so close. Yeah, it's like it's it's 10,000 feet up, wasn't it? Yeah, it's so close. Yeah. Like, how. There must have been fallout to that. There must have been. Well, they don't yeah. care. That's yeah. what we get to next. Yeah. That's what they don't care. So a day later, right, they've saved the world. There's a couple of jokes about, <laughs> they look at a newspaper. This dude, they, they give some random dude's name, bought all these houses in Bel Air for only 10 grand yeah. a pop, and now they all want to buy them back. <laughs> and they all just laugh it off. <laughs> and it's like, hey, professor, aren't you worried about the nukes being used bad? He's like, no, I've got the plans. And then he looks, and he just lost the plans. And then they slide. And that's kind of sliders. I mean, they always they, leave. <laughs> they miss one bit because the just before they're leaving, where he's got the newspaper with the headline. Mm. The, you see the wife, um, traffic lady, coming out to see the. Give him a ticket again. I would assume. Give him a ticket, but it just, it just cuts off before anything. Yeah. So we had a little oh, bit that's of. A, the sto- that's the story. I that's that's that's, was, that's the core of the episode for you. <laughs> that is my core of the yeah. episode. I don't know, for me it was the New Year's countdown being used. Oh, yeah, but he um, uses the countdown for impact. I know, oh, how good is that? The New York ball, yeah. the New York ball dropping the ball, Times ah. Square. And also, you mentioned not too long ago about it being very American-centric. We kind yeah. of got a little bit more 
around yeah, the Yes, so there was a news broadcast, wasn't yeah. there? Kind of like touching in on uh, Bosnia Herzegovina, saying there was a ceasefire because of uh, the coming asteroid. Uh, but then they also went to Palestine and the Palestine Israel border. It's like, just no, those girls are murdering each other harder than ever. They're, they're like they're really going they've for got, it. They've got they've got carte blanche. They just go into town. Yeah, they just go into town. Um, yeah, right. It did, but at the same time, it still felt really local because it's like everything still happened in San Francisco. Yeah, no, no. The missile yeah, was yeah, launched yeah. in San Francisco. The atomic bomb was built and you know constructed in San Francisco. It was all happening in this one little part of town, this one particular city, which it just felt a bit mad. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of the whole episode. Um, I think it's weird because it's definitely simpler than the one we did before and I think that's reflected in how much quicker we've been able to go through the recap which yeah. we've just done Yeah. but I do think it brought up way more interesting moral uh, implications uh, than the previous episode with specifically the, the nuclear bomb stuff yeah, yeah. Um, it was cool that they touched upon it the morality and Arturo definitely did explore that uh, there's a lots of referencing Einstein and Oppenheimer and like you know Einstein they said at first it didn't work, right? Because Einstein said, oh, yeah, there's not enough fissionable material on the entire planet to make a bomb go off. Actually, it turns out, though, he sabotaged it because he chose the, the moral implication of it being too negative to take that guilt on no, himself. He's just let a war go on for five years. Five years more and, and that's millions a more die probably in that conflict. But that's the interesting part of this debate. So Arturo is now wrestling with this, this implication of, like, well, I've given them this power... Um, you know, it saved the world today, but is it going to destroy the world tomorrow? So it's this, it's interesting, uh, and it leaves you with, which I think is indication of good sci-fi, it leaves you thinking about the plot and the story after the episode ends, which, you know, I think that's quite impressive, even yeah. though even though it's got some really derivative bullshit with, like, Wade's characterization in there, oh. um, it, it does leave some kind of interesting sci-fi concepts lingering, you know. Um, so what did you guys think about that? I, re I really enjoyed that element, but overall, what did you think of it? I, I really like that element as well. I've always liked that in my sci-fi. Always liked that in my sci-fi, the, uh, the thinking element, when it comes to those moral implications. What about I, you? I wasn't sure. Because I think they went too heavily on the, obviously, the nuclear morality. And yeah. Didn't, I wanted a bit more focus on the sort of, the day after the last day morality, which is just, Almost the hangover, consistent. the yeah. hangover, right? Yeah, the, 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 all those people and what they've done, and you know the the people that have killed people, the people that have you know raped people, the people that have you know shot themselves in the head, and you know the effect that has, like just the effect on that guy, you know, in that room. So there's like those three guys, one guy showing something at the end of the day, and then you, you wake up and nope, yep, you know, it's not the end of the day. I've got that that is a memory, that is a that bit was kind of thing that's like, lost over with. for a lot of it. Yeah, it mm. was. Yeah, it was the only bit. bit we kind of see is. There's another call back to the church and the woman's still there handing out bread and rolls. Yeah, well, a lot the of people wife. cut in line. Yeah, there's that one guy, <laughs> that douchebag, that just takes, cuts in but line. You think he's going to be nice. He takes off his hat, yeah. sign of respect, being in a church, and then just cuts like cuts a mofo. Th there was also that woman that was just like just shoveling, shoveling into sho her pocket. <laughs> shoveling loads of buns into her pocket. What? Well, I mean, the problem is, the implications, the, the hangover thing is beyond what we're talking about, the immediate implication is that, well, have people been growing food? You know, there's going to be probably like well, I mean, mass... People that sold all their houses. Yeah, yeah. people don't have places to live. Um, yeah, you know, shops have gone out of business. I'm guessing fires have been set. Uh, none of the police or, you know, armed forces have deserted their posts. Uh, so it's going to be complete, like, how do you... I guess what you would do as a government, if there's still a government, they might have to reform that. But you'd give sort of like an armistice to the people about the crimes they committed thinking that would happen because you couldn't surely go and punish on everybody territory, ben. Yeah, but you, no territory. but what I'm saying is you couldn't, yeah. you couldn't go around and be like oh no you committed all these crimes and we're going to prosecute yeah. all of you because yeah. I bet everybody did stuff they shouldn't have done so you're going to have to let everybody off no you didn't balloon guy yeah balloon guy balloon guy was just following his dreams mate. just following his dreams there is, there is that one moment in the episode when they're look, he's looking at the plan it's, it's when Maximilian's looking at some of the plans and then Benish comes up behind him, slaps him and goes, yeah, well, we've made the atom bomb. And then you get that kind of like, dun, dun, in, dun, 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 like cut music. And he's really, and he does that really intense kind of acting like, oh God. What have I done? Yeah, what have I done? What this, have I done? I need, to, I need to steal this. Like just in case you, uh, didn't, you didn't get it. FYI, two episodes in a row here, Arturo has scienced the shit out of the problem. He has, he has he saved is... the world, another world. Do you know what? You look at this and you go, this is why John Rhys Davis took this role because he's kind of the hero. Yeah. At least in these early episodes, without him, 
Yeah, everybody be screwed. Quinn Quinn is basically this bumbling moron who has more brains than He's sense. He's the guy that gets them overall. Yeah, but like Arturo is the one that fixes these worlds. Like properly so far in the last two episodes, save the day. Like straight up, without him, they'd all be dead. Or you know, the world would be you know be full of plague very, or or blown yeah. up. It's very like Doctor Who in a way. You know, like yeah. every day, like traveling to different worlds, saving the day, that kind of thing. Yeah, he's, and got, he's I mean, kind of got his traveling companions. He's very much the lead yeah. uh, in this so far, the heroic lead, uh, and it's cool because it's also like science and thought and intelligence are what's saving the world. You know, it's bad science at times. I mean, like I'm pretty it's sure. Loosely science. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't have made that atomic bomb work that easily. Um, it's all up here. It was all up in his brain. <laughs> all up in his brain. Smart Arturo saves the day. But yeah, I mean, um, he, he's definitely like at the forefront in those two episodes we've watched recently. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if Quinn gets more of that heroic uh, stance or if Rembrandt ever... Sa I wonder if Rembrandt ever saves the day. I, I, mm, I have some I have. Days. I think I've just got this vague memory. I think he does do something like once or twice. By mistake. It has to be mistake. Yeah, but in like... I He's not going to do it yeah. intentionally, is he? I mean, because that's no way. That man doesn't do anything intentionally. He, he is... Oh, my God. We talked about it after the pilot, didn't we? He, yeah. He's just this comedic... Almost like jester. He's yeah, he character. is. He's the court jester. Collection. Yeah. He's not, um, sorry. He's a trope collection of just... Yeah. It's just every every you know every aspect of of stupid America in one place. Like I I think that was this 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 conscious effort of like we're gonna make smart sci-fi with smart people in it, but we want people that don't understand the science to also enjoy this show. So we need a character that can come in and just go yeah, duh, 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 like that, and then be explained to constantly yeah, about what's yeah, happening. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and yeah, I guess he fills that role, I suppose. Admirably. I mean, you know, Wade, Wade's, I mean, his definition is stupid, Wade's definition is thirsty, and then you've got <laughs> Quinn's that's kind of just like the hero, I suppose, and then Arturo is the smart one, you know, so yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I would like to see a bit more character development, obviously, whether we get it, I'm not sure. I'm not it's, holding my breath just yet. I mean, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this episode overall. You liked it's, it more than the last one? Yeah, I liked it much more than Fever. Yeah. Yeah, much. much yeah, definitely. Um, How about you, Nate? I'm, I'm putting Fever above this. Okay. Controversial. But... I don't know. I think they've both, I think they've both got interesting um, ideas behind them. This, this feels like bigger scope sci-fi, whereas Fever felt more like... Um, more high concept like the idea the, yeah. around that one difference in that reality this this one difference was a big difference it I'm wasn't a the small pilot difference. firmly is third currently though it's... well with the, with the with the with the kind of on the nose yeah flip flip very... reversal with russian society and stuff like that yeah it was yeah definitely like the broadest of broad strokes of what an alternative reality could be but yeah i think as we go along you're going to be pleased with some of the some more subtle changes and so they get so far i mean they've played it quite safe if you think about the yeah. changes they've made they are quite obvious in their sort of oh an asteroid all right okay oh a disease huh the russians it's like we get into weird territory i can tell you there's some very strange stuff coming up very um, very weird i can't wait i can't I wait to get into so. that um but that do you, anything else any uh, final thoughts on the episode guys and i'll wrap it up i think i think almost like overall at the moment um with episodes like this, it's kind of a shame that the show went away with with some like you know with this episode, this nice call cool, like the lingering sci-fi questions and stuff. It's a shame we didn't get more of that. I, I mean, I, there, there's some really strong stuff in these in these in this series in general. I think uh, there's definitely um, we haven't had a bad one yet. Like I think these are these are good ones. They're definitely good episodes with good ideas. Yeah, I, the, the biggest problem with this was the characterization of Wade. Yeah, I think it's just Ooh, yes. there's just nothing there. There's just nothing. Um, it's just super super lazy and super nineties, and it's just a shame that you know for sci-fi you can do so much more with female characters, and there was other sci-fi doing more with female characters at the time. Yeah. So it's a shame that you know they're playing it so safe and just mm, borderline offensive by today's yeah, standards. Yeah, I, I would say yeah, definitely borderline <laughs> so, offensive. Yeah. Same with Rembrandt. <laughs> to use as well. to use that quite annoying 2019 buzzword problematic characterization. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely problematic. Um yeah. yeah Defined it's... by the man 
is our, is our whole character in this episode. Uh, what about you, Nate? Any final thoughts? Um, well, my one is, it's a big zero on the gate watch. But yeah. what did you have your final count on the Wade watch? We got, we got six on the Wade watch. That's a high score on Wade watch. I'd be, I'd be very intrigued to see if it can be maintained in the next episode. Uh, gate watch, I'm really, we've had two zeros now in a row. I'm <sighs> desperate for some more gate. The problem is, we even went back to a Quinn house and we didn't get... Gate watch. Yeah, I mean, they, it's like what, guys? They, yeah, there could have been the implication of five is it, are we back scene, home? Five. Oh, see, that would have been. Yeah, that would have been so cool. Are we back it's home? Like, oh, it's the gate squeaking. squeaking. Is this actually my universe? Yeah, but except for the whole no atomic bombs. So we kind of knew that. Well, for the viewer at the beginning, it would have been interesting as a viewer for the first time watching that if they tried to open the gate and squeaks and goes, oh no, are we home? Uh, the nuke's about to land. Or, you know, like, is, is the, the asteroid about to land, sorry. Mm, and then and then later on, they find out no nukes and they go, oh, okay, it's not, it's not our home, you know. Do we have any other metrics we're measuring on? I can't remember. I felt like there was another one. <laughs> but I guess, I guess that's those two. I think we've got the, just the two. Just the two. Now. I think we're going to be building that's these. That's enough. Well, well listeners, by all means, uh, give us some feedback if there are any other systems you would like us to score an episode of Sliders on. Perhaps on uh, cue balls. We could, re- we could do cue ball watch from Rembrandt because we've got, we've got gate watch for Quinn. We've got Wade watch for, for Wade. We could have cue ball watch for Rembrandt. And what could, what that... defines, what defines Quinn? What, what could we say he could, well, he, how many times does he whip out the, the, the sliding device and, and look at the number on it? What could say? we call that? If slide watch. Slide watch? <laughs> slide watch? That would be like every other episode. That would be yeah. great. Every time you see him pull out the controller, take a shot. Oh man, we're so drunk. <laughs> we need something for Arturo but Arturo yeah maybe uh, saving the day but he's going to do it like every episode at the moment <laughs> it does seem to be at the moment they, that's what the writers are relying on right now definitely um, so yeah to, a crying man a crying man watch you can find oh, us you can find uh, you can find experience kills uh, at experience kills on Twitter that's where you can definitely leave us some feedback or leave us some feedback in the comment section on YouTube and while you're there give us a like and a subscribe as well we'd appreciate that wouldn't we lads yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Do it. And then uh, if you'd rather than watching a waveform move up and down on YouTube, because this is a podcast, you can also subscribe uh, to the uh, podcast on iTunes at Circle in the Vortex. Easy enough to find. It's right there. You've also got a dedicated RSS feed as well, which you can subscribe to if you don't like using iTunes. And I understand that because iTunes is a bit crap. So we're going to see if we can get this podcast up in a few other places as well. And we'll be back in two weeks' time to check out another episode, won't we, lads? Lovely. That's been great. Really, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually really am looking yeah. forward to doing some more of these. Excited to see um, yeah. uh, the next verse. Yeah, I can't wait. The next, the next world. <laughs> next world. Yeah, can't that's wait. that's the fun part of slides. You never know what you're gonna get, man. You literally never know, Nate. It's brilliant. Uh, so thank you very, very much, Nathan. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Curtis. Thank you very much. And I've, as always, been your host, Ben. And uh, see you in two weeks. Bye bye. What if you could travel to parallel worlds, the same year, the same Earth, only different dimensions? A world where the Russians rule America. Or where your dreams of being a superstar came true. Or where San Francisco was a maximum security prison. My friends and I found the gateway. Now the problem is finding a way back home. 